Hello and welcome back to my best of the year series of videos. Today we're going to talk about the best two bay of 2020 that you should buy. If you've been on the fence about buying a network attached storage device and you've been looking at the two bays because of that nice RAID support and a good level of price versus hardware, then chances are a number of the NASs I'm going to talk about today you've already heard of. But today I'm going to talk about the best ones for you to buy right now if you're watching this video into 2021 then uh, somewhere past about may perhaps this video might be a little bit out of date there might be some good stuff out there but right now i would go as far as to say that the three nazis that i'm going to talk about today are by far the best two bays currently in the market to buy they've all been available for a while and on top of that i'm going to go through their highlights and in some cases some of the stuff that could be improved but before we go any further Let's go through the disclaimers. What makes a NAS appropriate and suitable for um, even classification, let alone getting a chance to win uh, what is the best two-bay? Well, here is my criteria. First and foremost, they have to be a two-bay, which is defined as a two-disc system uh, with SATA support. Now, I am only looking at systems that use SATA drives. It's worth highlighting there. But they're generally two and a half inch to three and a half inch drives. As long as there's support of both, that's absolutely fine by me. On top of that, they they have to have been released and available for sale anywhere in the world um, uh, before about October 31st. So they have to be available in the bulk of the world, uh, whether it's the east or the west or anywhere in the middle. If it's been released after that, I'm sorry, it's not going to be considered if it's something that's coming out in the future we're not going to consider it it can have been released in 2017 18 19 that's okay but as long as it's been available for sale for 2020 up to october 31st then it's in the running also it has to have at least two years of manufacturer's uh, warranty and no way i'm going to go sell for anywhere less than two years simply because if i buy a product i want to know that i'm covered in terms of hardware and given that the majority of two bay nazis arrive at about somewhere between four five six hundred quid at a pinch i think that warrants at least a couple of years of warranty if not even further next when i'm talking about the best two bay all of the solutions i want to talk about i want to know that whatever the brand is promising that i can use it so all of the two bays I'm talking about today, all of them will use the gamut, the full range of software from their respective brands. So if you've heard something that the brand is saying that their system can do, unless it's something very, very genre specific, like a flash station series or a dedicated surveillance model, these NASIs can do what the brands say. And if they can't perform the most of what I would call the flagship applications, then they're not in the running. Of course, I'm only looking at desktop solutions, even though there are two-bay rack mount solution. I think the last one I can remember was the RS217, but rack mounts I consider enterprise and in a very different world, and I'm not going to feature them in my list. And finally, they have to arrive with support of an x86 64-bit processor it can be intel it can be amd but as far as i'm concerned it has to be at least a modern architecture 64-bit processor i will not be looking at arms simply because arm or arm processors even the ones that are relevant in 64-bit do not support the full range of applications from most brands so i'm, I'm not looking at nazis that feature that kind of architecture so We've got the three, our first, second, third. Uh, all of them have their own utility in terms of hardware, software, and both. Before we even get to that list, just real quick, let's give an honorable mention. This is the NAS that almost made the cut, that didn't quite make the top three, got very, very close, but for its own reasons, I'm afraid it got pipped to the post. So it's got its participation model, it's got its thank you for trying. It is the Terramaster F2422. That is a two bay NAS with 10 GPE inside, so it is a 10 gigabit Ethernet two bay NAS. It even had an Intel Celeron, albeit the older generation J3455 that we've seen in the previous generation of other NAS brands out there. And if it wasn't for that CPU and the ever so slightly lackluster software compared to some of the other brands, it may well have made the cut. But that two bay and its 10 GPE, as impressive as it is just doesn't match up quite to these other models. It's the only one that's got 10 GBE, but on a two bay trying to saturate 10 GB and filling up that 1000 megs bandwidth, it's nigh enough impossible. So that was the honorable mention. Let's get to the nitty gritty. So in terms of software, the best two bay to buy 
in 2020 right now and of course going into 2021 is the Synology DS720 Plus. This is a NAS I didn't think it got enough um, kind of recognition when it was first released. A lot of the newer generation of Synologies when they arrived, they all arrived very, very close to one another. Even their announcement to the original leak of some PDFs back in, I think, April or May, these systems all kind of got banged out within the course of about six or seven weeks. The uh, two four bays and two two bays, along with some PCIe cards and more. The result was that the 720 for me got kind of left in the shadows, and it was a shame because it's by far the best two bay that Synology have ever released. Notwithstanding the fact that it's got that Intel Celeron, the J4125, a quad core 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be clocked up to 2.7 with embedded graphics too, it also arrived with 2 gig of DDR4 memory, which, although a bit weirdly, only went up to 6 gig as a memory upgrade officially. Bit odd, we'll cover that another time, and I'm sure I've done it already. This 2-bay also arrived with its 2 bays of storage and expandability to add 5 more drives, and it had the ability to add NVMe SSD cache to improve the internal performance with NVMe's for caching there. And with DSM 6.2 and 7 round the corner, promoting a huge amount of improvement in background caching, all of this really came to the front, having a two-bay from Synology that really seemingly brought all of the things that they're promising in DSM in a software and in an access hardware way to fruition, whether you're using it for VMs, Plex Media Service Surveillance, day-to-day -day applications, or as a backup for multiple systems, you could not go far wrong. Uh, in terms of software, for the very most part, than the DS720 Plus, arriving at about 440 quid. It is an exceptionally close price point to the other systems we're going to talk about today. But it's just the software of DSM that really sells that system so, so far for me. So next... I'm going to talk about an Acer store now. So I'm going to talk about the Locker Store 2. Now, the Locker Store 2 has only been around for about three, maybe four months. They've already had the Locker Store for a while. And the Acer Store Locker Store 2, for me, served as a lovely middle ground because it brought a lot of the things that QNAP have been talking about and a lot of the things that Synology have been talking about and Kind of all of those little highlights that the other companies talk about, and I know I draw comparison to those two brands with Acer Store products quite a lot, and I do it because you do it. The Locker Store 2 arrived with that same CPU that we just talked about, the J4125. Uh, it arrived with 4 gig of DDR4 memory, so twice as much as that of the Synology we just talked about. It also arrived with 2.5 GBE on the rear. So instead of the 1 gigabit Ethernet that the Synology had, it's got 2 times 2.5, so with link aggregation, 5 gigabit Ethernet. On top of that, it also arrived with an HDMI out, which allowed you to have a KVM setup, keyboard, video, mouse, and enjoy lots of applications locally as well as um, over the network and the internet. On top of that, it even arrived with an M2 NVMe pair of SSD caching bays. So the idea is that you can add NVMe's to this system and use them to cache, you know, the uh, uh, give assisted cache um, support to the two storage hard drives. It even runs with BTRFS. And those NVMe slots can be used for raw storage as well as caching now in a recent update from Acer Store and their ADM GUI software. It is a you know a nice system there. It doesn't quite reach the heights or that Synology does in terms of its software, where they plough a lot more of their finance into that software, but it's still a nice compact detailed system with an L C D panel, uh, front mounted controls. Um, a, a mobile application remote support, IR remote support, brings a lot to the table and manages to do it at about 10 or 15 quid less than the Synology. You know, it's, it's, it's a very compact, solid system and it's just as expandable as any of the other devices on the list. It just doesn't quite hit the same software height as other brands. You get a lot for your money, and if you're going to run third-party software, you probably won't come away disappointed whatsoever. And given that it brings a lot of the hardware features from QNAP and a lot of the software features from Synology and merges them all together with those NVMEs too, it's a very competitively priced and well-placed 2-bay, and definitely the best 2-bay that Acer Store have put out there. Now, 
My final slot goes, of course, to a QNAP, and it's one you can probably tell, say which one, you know, before I do, but it is the TS253D, the D series, the 53D, uh, the latest iteration of that family from QNAP, for me has been one that has been going from strength to strength to strength. It's brought everything that the 53 series had before it and upgraded almost every part of that. Pretty much all of its hardware attributes bar one we've already talked about um, first and foremost there is that cpu again all three of these systems the same processor the j4125 and four gig of ddr4 memory on top of that it has got those 2.5 gb e slots which is exactly what you want and just like the asus store there it also has hdmi out very interesting indeed it has five usb ports covering usb 2 and usb 3 but it also, and this is the interesting one in terms of hardware, it also arrives with a uh, PCIe upgrade slot. PCIe Gen 2 times 4 with 2000 megabits per second throughput to the main controller board internally means that although it doesn't have the NVMe SSD bays inside for caching or raw storage, you can add that feature later if you choose with either the QM2 dedicated cache card and raw storage NVMe card, the 10 GBE or dual port 10 GBE card or the combo card which has both. So what it takes away by not having the NVMe caching, it gives you back by allowing you to choose your own upgrade which I think a lot of users will quite like. It arrives at a price point of around 420 to 430 including VAT, which means all three of these NASes are quite similarly priced. But at the same time, it's worth highlighting that this device has software that is quite close to the Synology degree. Synology still, I think, own the high ground when it comes to their software, but QNAP are getting closer and closer and closer with a number of their applications really breaking the mold of what you think you can do with your data. Lots of first-party apps, lots of stuff in the background to do with data compression or sharing and mounting hybrid storage with the device as well as easily the best VM application out there to date in my opinion as well as the best multi-tiered backup tool in hybrid backup sync 3. It brings more to the table in, uh, in terms of software than the Acer store and it brings more to the table in terms of hardware than the Synology so this serves I think as the middle ground with the Synology on the software, Acer Store on the hardware and the QNAP bringing both. Those are my top three two bays to buy at the end of 2020. I hope you guys agree and if you didn't let me know why. Otherwise click like if you've enjoyed the video, click subscribe to learn more and visit the link in the description to NAS Compares where I break down exactly why I've picked these three and all of the testing and choosing parameters as well as links to my reviews on these and how they compare against other two bays. Otherwise, I will see you next time.